Welcome to Arts Focus. I'm Elise Buckeye, a program specialist with the Office of Cultural Affairs. And today I'm joined by Dr. Alex Barker, the director of the Museum of Art and Archaeology. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, Columbia is home to just a plethora of art galleries um, in town. But um, as a museum, it kind of seems like that's a different focus. Mm -hmm. How do you see your role uh, or your mission in, commu in this community? Well, galleries, for the most part, have objects they put on display from time to time, and they change those exhibitions. Museums have a much longer term role, so we have very large permanent collections. And part of our goal is to showcase the entire development of the Western canon. So in addition to the works we have on display, probably about 3% of our collections at any one time, we have thousands and thousands of other objects that constantly rotate through the galleries and we use in order to do both exhibitions but also ongoing research on collections. As an academic museum, we have a teaching function within the university, and so we have students and faculty who are constantly working on the collections. Much of that research informs the exhibitions we do. Wow, that, that's pretty cool. It's kind of um, a whole circular experience there. Everything works together. That's great. So it sounds like it's a pretty large collection. How, it is. how large is it? Well, it depends on how you count. We have 15,855 individually cataloged objects in the collection, but that doesn't count groups and sets. So for example, we have lots of Japanese woodblock prints and triptychs, and that counts a single triptych, not the individual pieces within it. Right. Or a, a Notkin teapot. We have a beautiful teapot by, by, by Notkin, a living ceramicist, and it's a nuclear teapot where the body of the teapot is in the shape of a cooling tower, and it's got a little mushroom cloud-shaped handle, <laughs> and those two pieces together represent a single object. On top of that, we've done excavations in classical antiquity for almost 40 years, and as a result, we have very large archaeological collections, and those aren't counted in those totals. So we may have tens of thousands of sherds from an archaeological site, and those don't count against that 15,855 objects wow. as of today. <laughs> That's quite, quite impressive. Um, so, so which ones could we go and see today? Well, right now we have permanent galleries for Non-Western art, which is an unfortunate name, but it's because it's constantly changing African, South Asian material. We also have oceanic collections. We have a gallery, the Weinberg Gallery of Ancient Art, that includes what's considered to be one of the 10 best collection, university-based collections of antiquities in the US. A small exhibit of Byzantine and medieval art, and then larger Euro European and American art galleries that include everything from Renaissance and Baroque through 19th and 20th century and we just reinstalled our modern galleries within the past month. Wow, uh, and then in addition to that, you have the rotating exhibitions. Yes. Um, right now, I think there's studies in classical beauty, right. um, and then there's some pottery. We have a small exhibition of pre-Columbian pottery from both the Museum of Art and Archaeology and our sister institution, the Museum of Anthropology. It's drawn from both collections. And then studies in classical beauty is mainly works on paper that examine the development of concepts of beauty largely from the, say, the 16th century on. Yeah, um, and I know you've also brought in some traveling exhibits. Mm -hmm. um, you had the Electrify exhibit recently. Um, can you tell me about that? Sure, Electrify is a special exhibition. It's part of an ongoing project by VSA and the Kennedy Center, and it's a juried national show of works by emerging artists with disabilities. And we've done it before. We brought it in most recently, late last year, and it's a it's a really wonderful show. So it came in at the very end of last year and then ran for part of the spring. And we're very honored to have it. It allowed us to do a lot of inclusive programming, reaching out to audiences we don't always engage in the, in the same way. And during that same period, in order to increase our ability to welcome audiences of different kinds, we rehung parts of the galleries at a slightly lower height to make them more accessible to people in wheelchairs. We also had the staff go through autism training from the Thompson Center. So we're now the first unit in the University of Missouri to be certified as an autism-friendly business. Wow, that's very exciting. It is. Cool. Um, so you talked about that as kind of the special events along with, with um, that exhibit. You guys have a ton of special events going on, though, just throughout the week by week. Um, so can you tell me a little about, there's a sketching group, there's mm -hmm. movies. What do, you, what do you kind of see as your main focus areas there? Well, we have lots of different audiences we try to engage. So there's a K through 12 audience and we do tours for K through 12 every day. We also have 
general audience programs, partly to reach out to families and have families come in, but also to reach out to adults and seniors. So the sketching group you mentioned meets twice a month. It's folks who come in, no artistic training is necessary. They come in and they draw objects from the collection and seem to have a pretty good time. We started out just doing it once a month and now we've, we've expanded it so we can also do, do the programs on weekends. We have a summer camp. We have lots of after school and summer programs for kids. So whatever you're interested in, we can probably develop a program that, that will speak to their needs. Absolutely. Um, so for the summer camp, is that are the um, sign-ups still open for that? It's still open. You can visit our website and sign up or call the museum at 882-3591. And should it, is it mostly for kids with an artistic bent or could anybody all. would have fun with it? Everybody should have fun with it. We don't assume any artistic knowledge. <laughs> awesome. Um, so you, you also have um, some special events I know with families. You, you've talked about them a little bit. Um, what are those, the, the kids series? Um, what kinds of events do you offer with that? Well, normally it's, it's a combination of doing programs through the curatorial and education staff, and then also there's usually some kind of craft activity. So on the one hand, it's hands-on art training, but it's also dealing with a different topic, and those topics can be all over the map. Sometimes we'll talk about, say, coins or pottery, being an archaeologist, specific concepts in art. So it might be color or perspective, and just explore that using museum collections. So are these events free? All of our events are free and open to the public. All right. We do ask people to register simply because if we have too many kids, we don't have enough art supplies. But if we know how many kids are registered, we should be ready. That's awesome. Um, so how can people stay up to date on what's going on with the museum? There are a couple of different ways. We have a Facebook page, and I encourage people to visit that. We also have a website that has a calendar of all of our events. Plus, we also have uh, the Museum Associates, which is a separate 501c3 support group within the community. and. You can become a member and get advance notice of all of our programs, also invitations to openings before the public actually gets to see shows. Awesome. Uh, and that website, it's maa.missouri.edu. All right. Also, I should add that we all of our collections are now online. So if you go to maacollections.missouri.edu, you can see everything, whether it's on display or not. Awesome. Another great avenue for people to, to be able to come and see it. And you guys are located at Mizzou North on right. Business Loop. Corner of Garth and Business Loop. All right. Well, I hope people will come and stop by and see just all the amazing things you've got going on. I hope so. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And thank you for joining us for another segment of Arts Focus. Mm -hmm.